Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Pan the Organizer. So I'm excited today. It's a different style video. I'm sharing with you uh, my brand new hi-fi setup for my garage. So it's something quite unique. Uh, basically, it's the advanced audio package that I bought from Obsessed Garage. So no, this is not a sponsored video. Nobody paid for this video and I actually ordered this uh, kit on my own. So we're going to go over all the specs, all the details. Uh, basically, in a nutshell, it's this blue power sound node. So a uh, digital digital audio converter and streamer. We also have these studio monitors from Dyn Audio. These are the LYD8s. And in the corner, I also have a Dyn Audio 18S subwoofer uh, that has two opposing nine inch drivers. These bad boys, by the way, have eight inch drivers and a silk soft dome tweeter and it's one inch. Um, so I have my trusty sheets with me because there is a lot of specs that we're sharing today. Uh, but by the way, I'll include links to uh, all of this stuff in the description under the video for you guys to check all this stuff out. So you just have to sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So as you guys know, of course, I love detailing cars. I love being in my garage. And uh, one thing I love the most when I'm detailing is listening to music. I'm an audiophile. So uh, I listen to, yes, classical music. I love uh, also uh, female vocals like uh, Nora Jones, uh, Shaw Day, Diana Krall, that kind of stuff. Uh, I also like instrument music. So a lot of uh, flamenco because of the guitars that they use. I also like violins, that kind of stuff. But on a uh, daily basis, the fun music that I really, really enjoy when I'm detailing cars is hip-hop, believe it or not. So uh, for those of you who uh, maybe are new to my channel, first of all, welcome. Uh, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I absolutely love uh, high-end audio gear, video gear, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to give you a quick background of all the uh, equipment that I have in my home currently, and you're going to see just how obsessed I am because that's another one of my passions. Uh, I just love music, and I uh, also like uh, video and audio and that kind of stuff. So let me run over, first of all, my home theater setup. So in my brand new house, uh, I have what is probably my third or fourth custom um, home theater setup, but essentially, what it's comprised of is it's a 7.2.2 Dolby Atmos setup. So it has a JVC NX7 DILA projector, uh, very high end. Uh, the Marantz flagship SR8012 receiver. I have Golden Ear speakers. So for the fronts, it's a Triton 2 Plus fronts and a Golden Ear Supercenter XXL center speaker uh, and all the surrounds also from Golden Ear. I have dual SVS PB16 Ultra subwoofers, super powerful dual 16 inch. Uh, I have an Oppo Digital uh, UDP 203 4K Blu-ray player. I have an Apple 4K TV streamer uh, and a media player and a Grandview Edge 120 inch screen. And in that same setup, I also have a hi-fi or stereo setup uh, that is made up from a Macintosh Mac 7200 receiver, 200 watts per channel, a Focal Kanta V2 speakers, a high-end RHEL S3 SHO subwoofer, a North Nordost speakers, uh, speaker and power cables, and a Cambridge Audio CXN streamer, network streamer. Uh, so uh, yeah, some, some pretty insane things. I also had a lot of custom room treatments done, because as you know, it's important to control acoustics in that kind of an environment. Uh, so I had an acoustician first come in and take some room measurements. And then I had a team that pretty much does the acoustic treatments for all the major theaters and uh, movie theaters here in uh, Montreal, Canada. So they did my entire basement with bass traps, panels, clouds on the ceiling, that kind of stuff. So it just sounds perfect. So I had the same team, by the way, work on the acoustics in my garage. So after the measurements were done in the house, they came over and they installed some acoustic tiles, mainly on the ceiling, so we can keep the uh, the walls clean. Uh, there were a few upper panels also installed, but as you can probably tell, for a big garage like mine, this is almost 576 square feet, uh, almost 600 square feet, uh, which is 54 roughly square meters. So 24 feet by 24 feet with 13 feet high ceilings. So fairly large, uh, oversized two car garage. And so uh, to keep audio at a crisp quality, of course, for the voice when I'm recording videos, I had that done recently. And well, now for the audio setup as well, I get to enjoy music without reverberation uh, and uh, just uh, sound not sounding as good as it can, right? Um, but it doesn't stop there. I also am a fanatic of headphones, so I have quite the headphone collection. Uh, a few of them are uh, the uh, Focal Clear uh, MG, so the new magnesium version, the Hi-Fi Man Area, 
the Odyssey LCDXs, the high-end Medze Audio Empyreans, and last but not least, flagship uh, Abyss Audio AB1266 Phi TC, the complete package version, so that that's as high-end as it gets. Uh, I have a few others, the AudioQuest Nighthawks, I have Bose QC35s uh, as well for when I travel and all that kind of stuff. I have uh, the Apple AirPods Pro 2. So as you can tell, I really, really like hi-fi stuff. Uh, to power those uh, headphones, by the way, I have the uh, Burson Audio Conductor 3X uh, flagship uh, DAC and headphone amp. And I also have uh, a popular uh, stack, which is the Topping A90 and D90. So the power amp and DAC for headphones. Uh, those play super clean. And the Burson just has a bit more warm tone to it. So it feels a bit more analog. I really, really like that one. Uh, and the, topic the Topping uh, stack is just awesome for anything uh, that somebody wants to do some critical listening and be very precise in the way it delivers the, uh, the music. Um, in my living room as well, I have uh, some a pretty awesome setup. So uh, last year I bought the flagship Sony Bravia XR Master Series OLED 83-inch television. Uh, so it's the A90J model. I also have a Yamaha YSP 2700 soundbar with a wireless subwoofer. So pretty good stuff. And a PS5 as my 4K Blu-ray player attached to that. Um, what else? In the living room, I also have a DVLA Phantom 2. So that's a Bluetooth speaker. That was a limited edition, one of only 1,000. Uh, it's in sage green. Looks absolutely killer. And the sound of that small speaker is just ridiculous. Uh, what other small speakers do I have? Uh, I have an Ultimate Ears Wonder Boom 2 for the kitchen. When my girlfriend's cooking, she loves to listen to a bit of music there. So that does the trick. I have a Apple HomePod Mini as well. And in the garage, before I bought this new setup, by the way, this is what I was using and it was quite good. This is the uh, new latest generation Sonos 5. So I had this in the fall of 2021 and it does play very, very well. Don't get me wrong. The uh, audio quality that comes out of it is amazing. Uh, even for a big space like this, it was okay. However, as you guys know, you need a lot of power to fill big rooms like this. And um, although it's very good, it's not necessarily audiophile grade, right? So this here, <laughs> life changing. Uh, I had a lot of discussions with Matt Mormon, my friend. He's the owner of Obsessed Garage. He runs the YouTube channel and uh, he also has the um, uh, car detailing products distribution place, right? But he also caters a lot of audio because he's obsessed with anything garage related. So what he does, he basically uh, just searches uh, for all the best possible solutions and he has different offerings that he gives out there. So I wanted to honor the source because he does all the research guys, by the way. Uh, he tests a bunch of speakers, amps, DACs, combinations, cables, you name it, to come up with these solutions. And he has entry level solutions, mid tier, all the way up to super high end flagship stuff. Um, and he also makes everything very, very simple. That's what I like. You order one kit and you have everything that comes in your house that you need to connect it and he keeps everything simple. So for example, for this advanced studio monitor setup, uh, he also has these sheets or these designs online to keep everything simple. So it basically tells you your blue sound with uh, two pairs of XLR cables and a few adapters to connect to your uh, LYD studio monitors. And then you have the option of also adding a subwoofer like I did. So you can do the wireless option, which I'll show you what you need in a few seconds, or the wired option, again, through an XLR cable and you connect everything up. So you have the diagrams that you need. And uh, cause you know, it can get quite complicated right in the hi-fi world uh, but he kept everything simple so basically XLR cables with uh, some adapters that run from the blue sound node directly to the speakers themselves. There is a subwoofer out on the blue sound node. So I ran that cable to the uh, subwoofer and that's pretty much it for the single. And uh, you put the power cables for each. So each one of these speakers is powered through a power cable. Same thing for the subwoofer. So that's it, three power cables and three XLR cables. And that is it, you're good to go. Uh, I powered this on in a matter of five to 10 minutes. I was already set up and ready to go two minutes to connect the uh, the wires because it was super simple. I was able to run the cables behind my workbench so it is very clean, nice setup. I like that. I like to be organized. 
and then uh, like seven or eight minutes for the system to update itself. Uh, it runs, by the way, the uh, Blue Sound on your iOS device. So either your iPhone or also um, you can run it on a Mac or you can run it on Android and on PC. So it's as versatile as it gets. Uh, it takes pretty much everything. If I look at the streaming capabilities, we're talking Bluetooth with support for Aptex. Uh, it does AirPlay 2, Spotify Connect, Tidal Connect. It's room ready. It does MQA, uh, basically Anything you throw at it, it can do. Super powerful as well. This is pretty much as good as it gets for under $1,000 for a uh, DAC digital audio converter. This does everything. Uh, Quad-core CPU, it's a 1.8 gigahertz ARM Cortex-A53 processor. And the DAC chip is a 32-bit, 384 kilohertz DAC. And uh, yeah, it just streams everything. There's a USB type A port for uh, external drives as well if you want to connect those. Uh, it supports digital, optical, and analog input output options. It has, as I said, a subwoofer out. Uh, it has wired and wireless headphone outputs as well if you want to do that. Uh, and by the way, if you want me, my setup, I was able to do everything routed with cables, but know that there is the wireless option. So you have that kit that comes from OSD Audio. Everything is super well presented on the Obsessed Garage. So it basically comes with these two. So the top one is a receiver. Bottom one is a transmitter. It has just regular RCA connections in the back. So you'd hook up one to the subwoofer, one to the blue sound node, and boom, that's it. You have wireless capabilities for your subwoofer. If somehow you have to place it somewhere else in your garage and you wanna have wireless capabilities. So again, uh, Matt has done a tremendous job just putting all of these kits together. So he has uh, PSB audio kits on the more entry level side and for the higher end, he has all the Dyn Audio stuff and uh, you can go as far as your budget wants. So this kit is not inexpensive by any stretch of the imagination. Um, so of course, there's no shock in the hi-fi world. Sky is the limit, right? When you're spending money uh, to have good quality music, but I really, really enjoy this setup. Uh, again, the connections were so simple a few cables in the back of the speaker. So one power wire, uh, one XLR cable to the, uh, the speaker. You run the XLR cable to the Blue Sound node. The Blue Sound node itself connects to power as well. And a uh, power cable for my subwoofer and an XLR cable for the subwoofer. And that's it. Um, and yeah, you're up and running in a few minutes. The sound quality, guys. He had told me to prepare myself because uh, I had never, by the way, used any Dyn Audio stuff, right? So in my past, I had a few hi-fi setups. Um, so I had um, Vienna Acoustics, some uh, Beethoven Grand Speakers. I had some Focal Aria 938s uh, before, or 948s, sorry, before I had my Cantas. Uh, I had some Sonus Faber toy series for my home theater as well. Uh, I had the Rega amplifiers, CD players, that kind of stuff. Uh, I had Totem speakers too. I had the Model 1s, which were their flat flagship speakers at the time. Uh, I also played around with um, a few others. I think there were some forests at the time. So basically I went through a bunch of speaker setups. I had never tried Dyn Audio and I have to say, especially for this garage, it's big in size. So I needed a lot of power to be able to be moved by music, right? And by the way, that sub, insane. So if we look at the specs, it's a 500 watt class D uh, amplifier that runs it. It weighs over 45 pounds, so it's quite a heavy unit. Uh, frequency response, 16 hertz all the way up to 230 hertz. It's twin opposed nine inch drivers. It's a sealed enclosure with an active DSP. Uh, you can even pre-select uh, some filtering options in there that are going to match up with whatever Dyn Audio speakers you're using. So some presets for the crossovers and that kind of stuff. So I was able to input that I had the Dyn Audio LYD8s and it did everything on its own. Uh, speaking about the uh, these here, the studio monitors. So again, these are the Dyn Audio LYD8 speakers. Uh, basically, they have an 8-inch woofer, a 1-inch soft dome tweeter. So this is a silk dome tweeter, very, very soft. So there's no resonance or that tinny or metal sounding like other uh, tweeters, which is appropriate for the garage, right? Because essentially, technically, the garage is one of the worst spaces you can have for listening to hi-fi music. 
But we, the important here is not necessarily how you set it up. We're here to have fun in the garage. So you just want to have good quality and a fun time. I'm lucky enough uh, to have this acoustic treatment done in my garage. So it sounds amazing. But even if you don't know that you're still going to absolutely enjoy this and uh, rock on, it is a super powerful system. Uh, for the um, studio monitors, they're self-powered because they have amps inside them. So 50 watts for the tweeter, 80 watts for the woofer, again, class D. Uh, they're moderately sensitive. So sensitive. Sensibility, uh, sensitivity is 85 dBs. Uh, these weigh almost 23 pounds each. So um, yeah, these are, are if, we, if we put my hand on it, some pretty big woofers and I have some large hands. I'm six foot three to give you an idea of how big these are. And they fit just well. So this matte black appearance for the blue sound note, I went ahead with the white. Matt says that in a garage environment, that's the one that has less of a tendency to show fingerprints and marks and all that kind of stuff. So there's the black option too that's available. I think the speakers are available in white or black. Uh, again, all the info, check the links in the description. Uh, look at all the other options as well. If you guys are looking for simple audio solutions on the Obsessed Garage website, not only do you have access to these uh, sheets so you can connect everything up, but basically when you click on an option, everything comes with it. So when it comes to your home that package, you're ready to set it up. Uh, Matt also has all the videos that you need to understand how the package work and even how to connect all the stuff. He shows you that visually. So there was a lot of support and I truly appreciate that because uh, we uh, it, it can get very complicated right in the stereo environment, but uh, not here. Everything was so simple. And again, the audio quality, I, I don't know how to put it. It's absolutely crazy. I have experience with other studio monitors, by the way, in my um, in my office where I edit my videos with my uh, Mac. So I have an iMac 27 inch. That, that's the latest edition, um, and it's fully loaded. But the speaker setup, I have some Yamaha HS7 studio monitors. I have a Yamaha HS8S. Uh, subwoofer that goes with it. I have a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 audio interface. And so, um, yeah, all that stuff plays super well and it is very high end, obviously, for, for doing stuff on the computer so I can edit the sound as well and get crispy sound for you guys when I'm editing my videos. Um, but this here is a complete other level. Of course, it's not in the same price bracket as my Yamaha setup uh, for my computer, but um, yeah, it, it's crazy, guys. So yeah, anything you can throw at this for your music, it is pretty Pretty simple and again from your um, your phone regardless if it's Android or iOS you pull it up you're going to select the um, streaming option so in this case the node in my garage and it connects and boom you're good to go you open the uh, blue OS app and from there, you can control your whatever music you want to play to it or just go to your uh, iTunes or whatever um, playback software you use for your music. So basically your phone just serves as a remote because everything else is decoded and transmitted through this blue OS. And uh, yeah, connection is very, very sturdy. It connects through your uh, home Wi-Fi. There is an uh, Ethernet connection too in the back. Guys, believe me when I tell you this, uh, I can't really play music because on YouTube I'm going to get copyright strikes. So copyrighted music, you can't really give a demo. And anyhow, as you know, being recorded, play back through whatever device you're using, you're never going to have the full effect of the, uh, the music, but uh, take it from me. I know you guys trust my opinion. And if you're looking for a hi-fi setup for your garage, sim something simple, but kick ass in sound quality, in bass response, in that treble, in that mid-range, all that stuff, this advanced solution package with the LYD8s, the Blue Sound node, and the um, Dynaudio subwoofer, absolutely crazy. Uh, again, there's many options from entry level, regardless of your budget, way under a thousand bucks, all the way into the multiple thousands of dollars and even five figure range. So uh, there's uh, something for everyone out there. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this. I highly encourage that you go watch uh, Matt's channel, Obsessed Garage, if you wanna have a more in-depth look uh, into all of this stuff. Uh, if you guys love audio, by the way, let me know, I'm curious, what kind of setups do you guys have at home? Because Hi-Fi, as we know, sky's the limit and every single person that I know, nobody has the same exact setup, right? That's the cool thing, is discovering what, um, 
what resonates with you, what makes your heart tick when you're uh, listening to a system, right? Uh, sometimes it's even changing some cables in the higher, higher end setup can make a bit of a difference. That's for another day, that topic, quite controversial, right? But um, for the equipment, regardless if you have a dedicated DAC and a separate amp or an integrated amp, what kind of speakers do you have? I'm just curious. Let me know if you're into this stuff. Drop a comment in the comment section. Uh, again, I'll leave all the links to all this cool stuff in the description under the video. I hope Hope you enjoyed this uh, different style video today and if you do smash the thumbs up button your support uh, to show me your support also take a second and subscribe to my channel by clicking the subscribe button that's under this video and in the meantime guys don't forget keep it tight keep it clean and i'll see you on the next one